me and you, your motherfucking cousin too. Hit the nappy weave with a head brush. Welcome everybody to the real rush. What's happening, y'all? It's your boy Jade up here with the real rush, and welcome to episode five here on YouTube. And five episodes means that we've now tied for being on the air as many weeks as the Chevy Chase show was back in 1993. Only difference is, I don't think Fox has any reason and or right to cancel my ass within the next week or so, so I think we're good. Let's go ahead and get on down to brass tacks with this weekend's new releases. First up to note, before we even get to new releases, I know that I've been saying the word docket as of late, you know, what's next up on the docket, but that's a little bit too legal for the real rush, you know, we're not... I'm not a law firm. It's not Williams, Williams, and Williams, Williams, Dub, and whatever. This I'm, I'm a movie review show, so we're going to switch up, dock it. We're going to flip mode that joint. Ticket. Ticket. We're going to use the word ticket. All right. So, first up on the Real Rush ticket for this episode, Hunter Killer, which stars Gerard Butler as the commander of a U.S. sub, which has to venture into Russian, dangerous Russian waters, I should add, to save the Russian president from a coup. This also stars Gary Oldman, Common, Linda Cardellini, Linda Cardellini, and Linda Cardellini. But it also stars Michael Nyquist in one of his final film roles. He passed away last year. You might remember him as the lead antagonist in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, as well as the first John Wick. Hunter Killer. So back to the movie itself. The first 20 minutes or so are kind of muddled, but after that, it does pick up. There are a few intense action sequences, especially the underwater minefield sequence, so be sure to look for that. This is certainly better than Gerard Butler's last October Fair, Geostorm. I'd say that Hunter Killer is worthy of a matinee price, so go ahead and check out Hunter Killer. Moving right along. Next up on The Real Rush, Ticket! Can You Ever Forgive Me? Now this film is based on Lee Israel's true memoir of the same name. This stars Melissa McCarthy as Israel, who after no longer being able to create her own work, turned to embellishing and or forging documents by uh, respected authors and selling them for profit. Richard E. Grant stars as her partner in crime. Now, this is a for sure breakthrough dramatic performance for Miss Melissa McCarthy. Is there a possible best actress nod for her role in this? It's certainly possible. I definitely see something more more along the lines of uh, Golden Globe uh, Best Actress nomination. It'll be interesting to see what category this lands in, as this is a dramedy. Will this land in the comedy slash musical category, or will it land under Best Actress for Drama category? We'll find out in just a few weeks. Also, but, showing more promise, the screenplay, the words playing on the screen, spoken by the actors and the actresses, dialogue is on point this is showing a lot of promise for a best adapted screenplay nod can you ever forgive me definitely check it out it's a limited release currently check that out moving right along on the real rush ticket Jonah Hill's directorial debut and coming of age tale mid 90s now this stars Sonny Soljic who's also a real-life skater himself, as a lonely early teen who's bullied by his older brother, played by Lucas Hedges, and who also finds and makes friends with older teens at a local Los Angeles skate shop. This also stars Katherine Waterston, Katherine Waterston, and Katherine Waterston. This is funny. It's poignant at times. It gave me all the feels, and it's one of the realest movies I've ever seen. Given the era that it takes place in, the soundtrack, the music of the era, also on point. Not to mention, or actually also to mention, the music score is done by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and they do an amazing job. 
you add all this together up, ladies and gentlemen, and <coughs> wow. Not only is mid-90s my real rush pick of the week, but this is the movie that just easily landed on the Real Rush's unofficial top 10, if not possibly on the top 5 list of best movies of 2K18 so far. This is a must see, must see, must see, must see. I likened it a lot to this year's previous coming of age film, 8th Grade. They're both phenomenal films. Definitely see both of them if you get a chance, but if I had to pick one or the other, I'm going to go with mid-90s all the way on this one, y'all. It's in currently limited, somewhat limited release. I've seen it at a couple of the major uh, movie theaters in the area. Hopefully it gets a wire release because this definitely serves some, some attention. Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill, you killed it with mid-90s, bruh. Outstanding job. Next up, on the real rush ticket! <laughs> Give me your ticket! Next up on the real rush ticket, what they had. Now this is an emotional dramedy, more drama than comedy. This stars Blythe Danner as a woman who is suffering from Alzheimer's. And it shows how her daughter and son, played by Hilary Swank and Michael Shannon respectively, are trying to convince their father, played by Robert Forster, that she needs nursing home care but he at the same time is having a hard time letting go of their time together and living together all these years you know really not trying to come to terms with her illness uh, the situation also causes Hilary Swank's character to kind of reevaluate some of her life choices as well uh, especially due with her marriage due uh, excuse me to her marriage and with her relationship with her own daughter as well like I mentioned, this is a dramedy. Uh, it's more drama than comedy. It is humorous at times, but it's mostly emotional and it is a very heartbreaking story to, t to tell and to be heard. It is somewhat predictable, but that does not take away any of the impact of the emotion that this story delivers. Uh, this is actually a personal this is actually a personal passion project. For first-time writer and director Elizabeth Chomko, who was writing from her own experiences, from family experiences. And you'll want to make sure that when you do see this, notice I did say when, not if, this is a good see as well, that you do stay all the way through the ending credits for Elizabeth Chomko's personal message uh, that this movie was made with love and it's a story that others may want to relate to as well. So what they had, also in limited release, will it get a wider release? Not really sure at this point, but most certainly keep this one on your radar. And last but most certainly not least, up on the Real Rush Ticket, the new installment in the Johnny English series, Johnny English Strikes Again. Now Rowan Atkinson returns as the British agent to stop a cyber terrorist attack from hacking and taking over the world. Now, this is one that Rowan Atkinson fans are going to get a kick out of the most. It's a goofy, brain, disconnect kind of movie, family fun for all ages. I had not seen the first two installments of this movie, or excuse me, of this movie series. Still haven't, but didn't stop me from enjoying it. Uh, this doesn't look like it's anything that you really need to see anything of the first two movies to pick up on story-wise. Um, I, like I said, I enjoyed it fairly enough, and the audience that I was with got a kick out of it. All ages, all laughs could be heard all throughout the audience. Uh, it's not getting the best reviews right now. I think it was getting like a 1.5 out of 5 stars. I would certainly give it a little bit more credit than that. I'd probably give it like a 2.5 out of 5 stars at the very least. Like I said, it's not the... It's just brain good old goofy disconnect funny type of movie. It's... I mean, don't go in go don't go in there expecting anything, you know, life-changing out of this or anything. Most certainly not something to take seriously. <laughs> go in there and have yourself a ball. And enjoy Johnny English Strikes Again. This one is in wide release. In theaters everywhere.
in theaters everywhere, rated PG. <laughs> so, that wraps things up as far as the Real Rush tickets go this week. A couple things worthy to know before we wrap up this episode as a whole. As I mentioned last week, one of those three movies that we mentioned midway through, Can You Ever Forgive Me, Mid-90s, and What They Had, one of those movies was to become not only the 100th movie that I've ever seen up at the Angelica in the Mosaic District in Fairfax, Virginia, but also at the same time was to become the 165th movie that I've seen so far this season, which would beat last season's record of 164 movies that I saw in an entire year. It took me 12 months 12 full months to see 164 movies last year. I just did 165. That, that honor goes to what they had becoming, at the same time, once again, the 100th movie that I've ever seen at the Angelica, up at the Mosaic District. Y'all rock. Keep on rocking, y'all. And at the same time, became the 165th movie that I've seen this year. I just broke the record in just over nine years months. It didn't take me no 12 months. And Johnny English Strikes Again just became the 166 movie that I've seen so far this year. So we keeping this ball rolling, baby. The kicker is, will I be able to break the all crazy, almighty 200? I'd actually be aiming for 201 because if I hit 201, that would make 365 total movies that I've seen in the theater since the inception of The Real Rush in January 2017. So wish me luck on that, y'all. We're hitting some milestones, baby! So now, that being said, that wraps up this week's episode of The Real Rush. Please be sure to tune in next week where I will be reviewing Bohemian Rhapsody, The Nutcracker and the Four, Four Realms, Nobody's Fool, Viper Club, and hopefully, if more, hopefully more theaters will be showing this, it's not looking, uh, it might just be too early to tell, but hopefully I'll have a Suspiria review for y'all next week, the remake of Suspiria. Um, hopefully that will be playing in one of the theaters in the area. If not, I might have to make a special trip to go see that one, because that's a highly anticipated remake. Also, this coming Wednesday... I'll be seeing Alfred Hitchcock Psycho for the first time as Angelica will be wrapping up its uh, Hitchcocktober month, something that they do every year to celebrate Halloween and Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcocktober, yeah. Uh, so I'll be seeing that for the first time in one sitting this coming Wednesday night. Should I do a review on that or not? I think I might. I'm, I may or may not throw that in uh, to next week's uh, ticket lineup just for shits and giggles. So you're going to tune in next week to see if I go ahead and throw that in. But for the time being, please continue subscribing to The Real Rush here on YouTube. Make sure you're spreading the word of The Real Rush like everybody should be spreading love these days. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to go ahead and type those in below. And please don't forget to follow me on Instagram for my movie check-ins as they occur. That's at Champion hashtag The Real Rush. And for The Real Rush, I'm your boy J-Dub. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see y'all next weekend for episode 6 of The Real Rush. Once again, for The Real Rush, have fun y'all. Love J-Dub and enjoy yourselves at the movies.